Go ahead, put it on real tight. I hope you brought your best tonight. They say they got the fireworks, yeah, they say they got the show. Here around the shoots, you're the best, so let's go. This is Texas Toast. I'm your host, Miss Helen. Kick back and enjoy as we toast the best from Texas. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Texas Toast with Miss Helen. And we are going to get a little bluesy and rocky on this episode. And I am so excited to welcome to Texas Toast, Clay Melton. Hello, Clay. How's it going? It's going great. Thanks for having me on. Oh, so excited to have you on. And of course, um, you have uh, just such a phenomenal musical talent. I just, I love your music. And I want to talk about your your beginnings because at a young age, you're driving down the road in Northwest Houston with your dad and Jimi Hendrix is playing all along the Watchtower. And that was your moment at that young age where you said, oh man, how does this work? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's when I became like infatuated with the guitar really. And it was it was the solo specifically that kind of blew my mind. And I had like a I'd gotten a Toys R Us guitar uh, a Christmas or so ago, and it was missing a couple strings. Had like a speaker under the strings that you could turn on. It sounded electric. And I fumbled around on that for a solid year, just listening to whatever I could get my hands on and trying to sound it out. And then finally got my hands on like a Stratocaster copy and was doing that every day. Yes, you were doing it every day, and uh, you would ride your bike to Kyle's house and play in the garage. Yeah, me and Kyle jam in the garage. Uh, I mean, it was like every day, every, every after school or whenever we got the chance, and in the summers, through the hot summers, and there were a couple parties in his uh, family's backyard that were some of the first time we were just jamming in front of people. Yes, because even when you were young, you would play like at, at like that and block parties and crawfish boils in your area. Yes, yeah. Very, very Southern, very Southern thing to do. Yes. So then once you did get your first guitar, you did take lessons for a while until you kind of overwhelmed your instructor. I it just, uh, I, you know, I, I was, I did it for like a year and a half and, you know, we were doing blues and stuff like that. And I think, you know, what he was really saying at that time that I didn't uh, maybe take it that way, but what it pushed me to do is just to get out and play with other people, which I think is the best thing that young musicians can do. It, you just learn all your lessons in, a, in one moment. Everything's just moving a lot faster. And, you know, your mistakes are a little bit harder to learn when you're in a live environment or playing with people that are better than you. So that's then that's really what I took away for, at, from the years after that, just playing with Kyle and playing with everybody we could. Well, and, and I mean, you're still at a young age. I mean, look, look at all the years that you've been doing music at the age you're at. But at 15, the Dallas International Guitar Festival proclaimed you one of the top 10 guitar players in Texas under 20. And we were uh, we were a part of uh, the Dallas International Guitar Festival. Um, they uh, have a under 20 competition and we uh, competed in that. It was really cool. It was in the convention center up in Dallas. And we got to play alongside all the other contenders. It was a lot of fun. And so a crazy thing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I mean, you've, you've done some phenomenal things and still things to come. Okay. So I know that we did preview your current single, Live on a Wire. So you want to give me a little bit of background on that particular one? Because we really enjoyed that one. Oh, thanks. Yeah, we um, recorded that or wrote that song coming off of our summer tour uh, with Bluestones and Desrocks in uh, 2022. And the song's kind of about the whirlwind that it can be uh, in, during tour life and, you know, uh, shows every night, long hours after the shows and, you know, highways and parking lots after that. And just it, it's a whirlwind, but it's exciting and uh, kind of coming off that tour and feeling that energy. Luckily, it was a very smooth tour. And I think that's why we felt that way. <laughs> the song may not have been <laughs> written with, uh, with a couple more speed bumps uh, during the tour, right? But um, so we wrote it right after that tour and then recorded it here in my living room behind me. Wow. Uh, we've, yeah, we're doing that process for all the songs on this upcoming album. Um, and it's, it's nice, you know, being able to take our time and give the songs the time they deserve to kind of grow and figure out when we're ready to put them out there. Well, what I think is so great about having you on the podcast is, is of course, obviously your Texas roots. And you talked about your musical influence 
Texas and ZZ Top, and it's like your Texas connection. And blues has plays such a huge part in Texas music when you think about it. And it's like, you know, Kyle and I talk about Texas music, and it has its different genres, but blues is strong in Texas. It is. I mean, Houston has a, a really rich blues history, and that's kind of a uh, part of the circle I grew up jamming and playing and learning in when I was younger, the Houston Blues Society. Had several jams at places like Dan Electro's, Last Concert Cafe here in Houston, and um, the Big Easy. And those uh, those players there, Carlos Johnson, Congos by Carlos was a stage name, was one person in particular that really, you know, was welcoming and taught me lessons in a live setting. And, you know, Texas country music, as I grew up kind of just around and hearing whenever I was, you know, before I started playing guitar, my dad gave me a uh, suitcase of his cassette collection uh -huh. and so i had a lot of texas country in that a lot of george Strait, um some Waylon jennings a lot of classic rock as well which kind of pushed me in uh to, to that direction at the same time and you know we uh i <clears throat> i think guitar especially blues guitar has so many parallels with country guitar you know they're both very roots based and we had a great time the band and i uh i play with zach grindle on drums and zach cox on bass and we uh we three backed up uh country artists based here in Texas uh, Josh Langston on a tour last uh -huh. year and and had a blast just it's nice to be able to shift gears and do something outside of what what you do all the time as well you know well that's that's what's so great about you you're such a well-rounded musician and it's so nice to be able to bring some blues into our podcast so um, we just talked about Live on a Wire. That's your current release that you have out. But I want to go through some of your music. Of course, um, you just recently, 2022, released Live Vince's 10 original songs. And you did the cover to ZZ Top's Jesus Just Left Chicago, which went number one song in the world on the Roots Music Blues chart. Yes. yes. That's crazy. Yeah, it's uh, I've always loved that song. I like the original album when it transitions from the first track and it just busts into Jesus Love Chicago. Always excited me. That's an album me and Kyle were jamming when we were younger. We were both listening to ZZ Top from a young age. And uh, like I've said before, it's hard to grow up in Texas and not listen to ZZ Top. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> so I'm really happy. It's still We still play it at our live concerts and it's so much fun to do. So let's talk about your recording of Live in Texas. A lot of the good, interesting story behind that. So kind of let the listeners know about that. Uh, the, the idea kind of came around to do a live album for a couple of reasons. One, things were starting to pick up from the, after the pandemic and uh, in the music business. So we wanted to get something out there. And the past couple of releases, something we had talked about a lot in the process was, you know, how do we make this feel like what's happening on stage or in a club or in a room when we're all just doing it together? How do we get that live aspect to come across in recording? And so we said, well, I'll, let's just do a live album. And uh, and I'm really glad we did it. It was interesting because it was recorded at Dosi Do, where we have um, a performance coming up this week. That's kind of the second annual of the Live in Texas uh, show day was a show with a bunch of special guests. We had Sir Old Tune of Cool and the Gang, Evelyn Rubio, Sarah Grace uh, from here in Houston. And all the songs that went on the album, a lot of them, it was the first time they'd ever been played in uh, public before. And so while that's one perspective that I think is kind of neat to where it's really the beginning stages of those songs, we had a whole year to tour them and to really uh, let them grow and see where they went. And now we're revisiting some of those for our new releases. Absolutely. So let's talk about after that post-production and engineering on that particular project. Yes, we had uh, Malcolm Harper of Real Sound Audio, who also recorded our song, Say That You Love Me, uh, in 2020 uh, 20, uh, or 2019. And <clears throat> he recorded the live show, and it was mixed by Sebastian Cure, who uh, we've been working with for a long time. And he mixed uh, Live on the Wire and is still our uh, mixing manager as of now, and uh, was mastered by Kevin Butler. So talking about Say That You Love Me, I think I saw somewhere where you were actually by yourself in White Oak Music Hall and you recorded it there. Yeah, yeah, that was another instance of the journey of let, let's do, let we want it to sound live, so let's just do it live. And that was recorded during the pandemic, and that's why the, the place was empty, you know. Usually you'd think we'd try and do like, you know, get an audience out there and do it like live show. And it was very weird uh, playing too. It's a pretty, pretty large hall at White Oak Music Hall here in Houston. And uh, to have it empty had a lot of space, like sonically. And uh, but Malcolm Harper recorded that as well, and I'm still very happy with how it came out. 
Yeah, that's a great song. And I just I just can't imagine what it feels like just you being in that because that hall is gorgeous and it's so famous and, and it's like here I am recording a song. <laughs> oh, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> Who gets to do that? Nobody, you. <laughs> I will say we had uh we had rented the small room and we lucked out actually. Um their AC had broken and it was summer in Houston. And mm -hmm. so we said, Well, why don't y'all just step downstairs so we don't mind at all. Well, one song that I want to talk about, I think it's my ultimate all time, probably a lot of your fans' favorites, is uh, Back to Blue. Back to Blue uh, is like one of our slow simmers that eventually gets rock and roll, you know, and uh, was kind of the impetus behind like what got that EP started, the uh, record before Live in Texas. Um, and we recorded that with Danny Jones over in Katy, Texas. I had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And that's another one that went number one worldwide on that Roots Music Blues chart. Yes, in the blues rock category. Yes, good job on that. So I know you play a lot of shows, so tell me how you prepare, get ready for your shows, the travels, and what's the most rewarding thing when you get to get out in front of the people? I mean, the live show really is the most rewarding part. It, or it, For me personally, it's the biggest payoff, and I feel like the guys in the band uh, have similar feelings you know the recording process is its own payoff that is a lot of fun and to see an idea get all the way there but it's it's a different kind of labor of love to where you know there's a lot of behind the scenes and uh, you know whenever we get to get out on the road and, and play in front of people that's you know the most exciting part and then you know I, I love traveling and I've always wanted to be a touring musician and so anytime we can have you know a chance to check something out, especially something in nature, you know, when we're in a pretty part of the country, it's, you know, a great part of traveling. What's one of your so far all time favorite venues that you play or stages? Uh, we've been playing the Chevrolet main stage at the State Fair of Texas for the last uh, couple of years. Thanks to Glenn Smith, um, who uh, runs that stage every year at the State Fair. And uh, he's paired us with some great bands with Grand Funk Railroad. Um, this past year was Night Ranger and um, Daughtry the year before that. And uh, I mean, it's just, you know, it's it doesn't get more Texas than that stage. There's two Ford trucks or Chevrolet trucks, sorry, um, <laughs> above, the, above the stage. And it's kind of scary the first time you see them, like you're checking out the rigging because <laughs> they're massive, but it, it, it's a it's a good time. Only in Texas, right? <laughs> exactly. So I know you have a lot of shows coming up and you are playing outside of Texas a lot. So um, talk about getting prepared for that. Yeah, we're uh, we're hitting the road coming up here in April. And so getting ready for that is, you know, putting together. We like to try and put together a couple different shows so we can keep it fresh every diff every night, you know, and change it up for the audiences um, and for ourselves. But we're hitting the road April uh, 23rd. Uh, to the Baton Rouge Blues Festival, um, and then we're out to the East Coast in Virginia and a couple dates in Massachusetts and uh, New York, and it's going to be a good time. I know, and I know you have, you have such a, I guess, you're so well known in that Houston area, and you're so well supported, and I guess, you know, I'm sure that that, that foundation that was built there, you could carry, you carry that into when you go all over the nation. What's exciting, I mean, is just that, you know, I mean, it's such a big country and there's so many different places and types of scene to see, scenes to see, um, which are all made up of people and great venues, you know. I um, mean, we're really excited about this upcoming tour uh, because we're coming off of our last summer tour where we supported the Blue Stones and Des Rocks in that same region. So we're hitting a couple of the same venues and same uh, areas. So hope to see some of those people back out at the concerts and uh, make some new friends and fans. So going back a little bit to, to when you first started in music and as you were growing up, some of your musical influences, which I think some of those are obvious, but I want you to talk about that and what they meant to you. Yeah, I mean, you know, it 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 sounds like a very obvious answer, I, I think, especially being uh, from Texas again. Um, but, you know, I mean, the kind of the Holy Trinity for me growing up, you know, in, in middle school and when I was getting heavy into guitar was... Jimi Hendrix, Stevie Ray Vaughan, and Led Zeppelin. And I went back and listened to all their influences and, uh, you know, saw who they would be talking about in interviews. I could see 
or uh, or read about and that's what really got me into i'm a huge music nerd and i love lots of old styles kyle's probably been uh i know he's been a uh, uh, maybe a little annoyed at some of the music i put on on the road sometimes because I, <laughs> I like some old <laughs> swing and stuff like that and um and jazz and just all of it and so but those kind of four artists and including zz top um mm -hmm. really kind of catapulted me in all the directions that have been really influential and as far as i've gone well, and what's so interesting with you also is not only are you just such a gifted guitar player, but your voice is amazing. Thank you. I appreciate Did that. Did that just come naturally? No, I was not a born singer. Really? Uh, once again, Kyle can attest. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, uh, there's there's some camcorder footage somewhere of me trying uh, uh, to sing for the first couple of times, and it, it it's pretty heart-wrenching. But yeah. Um, I, I, it's just one of those things I, where I wanted to sing the songs that I liked to play on guitar because I was a guitarist first. And I loved to sing along to music I was listening to before I was uh, playing guitar. And, uh, but I didn't realize how much I struggled with it until I tried to do it with the guitar. And so, but I just kept plugging along and I wanted to sing the songs I was writing as I was growing up. And I think that's what made me keep focusing on it and keep, you know, putting in the hours. And then the, the gravel, I think, is part, is a mix of influence. Mm -hmm. And then um, just where where my voice kind of naturally lies, I guess. But uh, a lot of blues singers, Freddie King, I've always loved. You know, I mean, so many blues singers, they're almost shouting. Um, and then when they're quiet, they even got kind of like a, a rasp or just like a, it's just like a hint of soul, you know. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like how you describe that. That's kind of, yeah, your voice definitely has that. So are you working on new music? Will you have some, I mean, I know you just released Live on a Wire. Is that going to be coming up on a future album or any future music projects to be released? Yeah, we're uh, we're still keeping the title and date under wraps, but we're going to have an album out um, towards the end of this year and Live on the Wire, as well as our next single coming out in April, Runner, will both be on it with a mix of some songs that, I, like I said, were first recorded live in Texas, and now we're bringing them into the studio. And then uh, a couple of songs that have never been heard before. Awesome, awesome. Well, I can tell it's like you just you just have it so together, and your music has its own identity. And I look forward to what you have coming up. And it's just it's so nice to get to visit with you. I've heard so much about you from Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. Like I said, it was it was great to finally meet. Yes. Yeah, so one last question before I let you go. If you were a cocktail, what would you be? Uh, <laughs> probably whiskey on the rocks. Okay. Cheap and, cheap well, and simple. <laughs> <laughs> well, keep up the good work and what a joy to have you here on the Texas Toast Podcast. Thank you, Clay Melton. Thanks so much. She knew where I was from as she left, I dare to say. Well, you can go. But home.